The moments the markets have been waiting for. The Federal Reserve raising short-term interest rates by 25 basis points in a move that ends an unprecedented seven-year era of rates near zero. Let's bring in our panel to discuss this. I'm joined now by Nick Colas, the Chief Market Strategist at Convergest, and Sherry Arantia, founder of Macro Insight Group and former advisor to Fed Chair Janet Yellen. And gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. So, Nick, I'll start with you. Quite a historic day. What's your take on the Fed's move to raise short-term interest rates? Clearly an endorsement of where the economy is. Yeah, it does feel that way. It was certainly a move the market was expecting for a long time, but it is always nice to see the Federal Reserve confirm that they feel the economy is on a solid enough footing to begin that long, slow cycle of raising rates. And share your thoughts on what took place today. So going into today, Scott, the only question I think the markets had was, um, what would the Fed say about the pace of, of, the, of the coming tightening cycle? And they, and they certainly re-emphasized their bias for a very slow and very gradual pace. Well, let's talk about that because aside from the rate hike itself, you're right, <coughs> investors want to know about the second and third rate hike. So I want to put up a quote from the statement, which actually gave a little bit of a hint of what we should expect to come. It said, in determining the timing and size of future adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate, the committee will assess realized and expected economic conditions relative to its objectives of maximum employment and 2% inflation. So Nick, what's your take on this part of the statement? I mean, does the Fed go far enough here to sort of calm investors who are understandably nervous about what life will be like after rates are, are beyond you know, 0%? Of course, uh, the Dow is up some 100% since, this, since rates were, were, uh, have been this long. That's right. The, the key word in there, I think, is realized as well as expected. And that, that really is a nod to the fact that we do have some still resistance to inflation in the form of lower oil prices and a still fairly slow growth economy. So it's really a nod to those deflationary worries the Fed is trying to take account of there and making sure the market understands that they get that message as well. All right, sure, you are a former advisor to Fed Chair Janet Yellen and former Fed Chair Ben Bernanke. How would you advise them or Chair, Chair Yellen in 2016? I mean, how many rate hikes are you expecting next year? So, um, um, so first of all, you know, the uh, future trajectory of interest rates has everything to do with inflation. Mm -hmm. And, the, and the, you know, um, inflation has, has been extraordinarily low. Um, we're, we're very, very close to zero on many, many measures of headline inflation. Um, but I feel that the, that the era of near, near zero headline inflation is over. And next year we will, we will see inflation starting to, starting to pick up and starting to, to uh, buoy. And that, and that should give the Fed some confidence to raise rates, I don't think, until the second quarter. But we hear that inflation, <clears throat> the positive inflation expectation all the time from yep. the Fed. And they've been wrong for years now. Yes. Inflation hasn't been cooperating yes. with the Fed. And a lot of people are arguing right now that maybe the economy isn't ready for higher rates because of low inflation. So uh, two, two compelling reasons, I think, to, um, to believe that inflation is about to go higher. One, one is that, um, um, so, you know, uh, the unemployment rate is now at 5 Five percent. It's it's a it's a it's a hair's breadth away from 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 a, from an estimated uh, you know natural rate of unemployment of four four point nine percent. And we also have low oil prices. So, but uh, but the point is that that um, the labor market cannot continue to get better. The unemployment rate cannot continue to grind lower without at some point it triggering inflation. And we're and we're drawing very very close if if we're not already at that at that point for wage wage growth to. To sort of spark, there've already been, yeah, there've already been some sort of secondary nascent signs of uh, wage growth. So that's Nick, point. Nick, I want to ask you about the markets. I mean, what does this move mean for the markets? We always hear that it's priced in, but it's going to be really hard for investors to suddenly detach from obsessing over the Fed. Yeah, that's absolutely true. We've spent the better part of a decade now really wondering about every single Fed move, every single meeting, every single press conference, every single time a Fed governor gets in front of a camera. That's not going to go away anytime soon because now we're going to be obsessing about the next move, the pace, and what it's, what it's going to end up looking like through all of next year.
year. So the storyline might have the end of a chapter, but it's not the end of the book. All right, and what are you telling clients heading into next year? You know, we're looking for some modestly positive returns in the S&P, 2200 is our target, and only a modest rise higher for interest rates, two and a half on the 10 year. So we're telling them that there's gonna be a volatile, very volatile, I think, first half of the year, but overall returns should still be positive. All right, gentlemen, a great conversation. Certainly a historic day for the markets. Thanks very much for, to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.